Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France starting in 1920, part 2. Part 1 was quite planning heavy, particularly with what to do with our capital ships. Uh, part 2, less so, but still a lot of planning to do. Let's just have a quick recap to where we got up to. I've decided to scrap the unupgradable pre-dreadnoughts and a couple of our really slow light cruisers. I could have kept them on for colonial work, but there are other ones that possibly are more suitable. I decided to refit the battleships gradually. I haven't started that yet because, well, I haven't got the money. Um, I'm going to invest around about 4,000 each of them just to lift up and modernize, give them an anti-aircraft armament and give them some fire control or better fire control. I'm going to refit the Shanzi battlecruisers. Effectively, I'm going to downgrade them from battlecruisers to lightweight battleships with tissue thin um, armor, but at least reasonable guns, and just use them for a few more years until good new ships come on stream. I'm going to rebuild the Desai battlecruisers, and I've started on the first and mothballed all the others. And I've started to refit the Brux and Quet Logon for colonial service. I'm not really going to upgrade them very much. They still won't be great. They're kind of middling at the moment, but they will allow me to withdraw the battleships that are currently deployed overseas. Currently three of them are two in the Southeast Asia and one in the Indian Ocean. I'm going to start developing air power. I've begun by doing the CVL conversion from one of the pre-dreadnoughts. I will begin to build air bases and I'll build them region by region, starting with northern France because it's my home region and because Germany and the Soviet Union are probably the most likely opponents. I'll build both air bases and airship bases because the airships are still a valuable secondary reconnaissance on top of flying boats. There's some things still to do. I need to do a proper review of the destroyers and cruisers. I need to think about strengthening the coastal defences in the Mediterranean and perhaps later Southeast Asia. There's one four inch battery in the Mediterranean, which is just not good enough. Sort out the colonial fleet because it's all higgledy piggledy at the moment. Pull back the battleships, as I said, that are there and replace them by some refitted cruisers. And then think about designing some corvettes as colonial gunboats, 1,600 tonne. Um, and satisfying this requirement, so 17,000 tons in Southeast Asia, 10 in West Africa, 4 in the Indian Ocean and 4 in the South Pacific. It's not too onerous, um, but it'll just take a couple of years to sort out. Enemies, probably the Soviet Union and Germany first, followed by Italy. And if I think about fighting Japan, then once I've improved the bases down in Southeast Asia, um, I'll certainly think about that. At the moment, the bases can only take about 40% of the fleet. So that's the overall plan. Let's see where we're up to and run the months. Here we are in January. The fleet have all been put into reserve unless they are on colonial service with the exception of ships that I know I'm going to fully rebuild and I've mothballed them for the moment. I'm down by £1,000 on my monthly balance, but, you know, that should be fine. I find that the first year is a really quiet year. Often you hardly get any research advances, for example, um, and the tensions just bubble along. So I'm expecting to get through this pretty quickly. Let's save where we are and go to the next month. So, yep, for air bases and yep, for air bases again. Uh, we've developed an improved flying boat. Well, that's jolly nice. Let's bring this in here. Uh, identical, identical, identical. Well, it's obviously the um, narrow definition of improved. I can't see any real difference. A little bit tougher, but uh, I'm going to ignore that. So um, scrapping going on and you're going to be seeing more scrapping uh, take place. And let's go into uh, into March. Private shipbuilding, thank you very much. Always good to have private shipbuilding. 
Our shipyard is only 32,000. The Royal Navy has access to 40,000. So that's something certainly to bear in mind. More scrapping, close. Um, I'm still at a thousand. I'm quietly running down, but I'm expecting tensions to rise any minute. Well, not by that much. Here are our first refitted cruisers returning, which is great to see. So let's just close that and decide where to put them. So the two ships back are the quit logons. Uh, they are 3,800 tons, which is slightly annoying because my minimum uh, colonial requirement is 4,000 tons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them both to Southeast Asia, where they will start to build up uh, the fleet there so that I can start to withdraw uh, some of the battleships that are mal deployed there. And off they go. And let's press on till May. And the Shanzi has finished its small refit, which is very welcome. And the two bricks classes, or one of them, has finished as well. So that's brought our monthly balance nearly back into balance, which is lovely. Still wait, waiting to see some increase in the budget. I'm going to put the Shanzi into reserve and go get the other one and rebuild that to the same standard and push on to June. And there's the other of the Bruxes. More scrapping going on around the world and some small rebuilds. I'm going to send the Bruxes over to Southeast Asia as well. Get them fading away. And as you can see, not very much happening on the diplomatic front. It's July now and a Navy visit by Germany, uh, the old uh, comparison one. Now the Germans I have very, very good relations with and the Germans don't really have a lot that I want from them in the short term. So they might actually be a nice ally, Treaty of Versailles notwithstanding. So um, I don't want tensions to go down, so I'm going to be neutral uh, about this one. Shame it was Germany. I could have done with something better. Uh, they've developed a flying boat privately. So similar speeds, similar range. Nope. It's just the same effectively. However, that does remind me to have a look at my aircraft types. I've got a fighter, a float plane, and a flying boat. What I'd like, please, is a torpedo bomber. I'd love it to have a great range, and I'd love it to have... You don't really have to worry about bomb load with torpedo planes because they carry a torpedo. I mean, the bomb is secondary. So, um... I'm going to go for reliability. Reliability in these early planes is poor. You need them actually to be flying. So that's off. And on to August. The old maneuvers. Open fire on fishing boats. We're looking at you. Now the British. If we look at the Almanac. The British, of course, have pretty overwhelming strength. 11 against 14, well, that's not too bad. Four battle cruisers against 13. Similar armored, uh, heavy cruisers or armored cruisers. Slightly more light cruisers, roughly the same number of destroyers, and slightly more submarines. So they're not, for once, the overwhelming nation that has multiple times your strength. So I'm not that frightened. Off to the next one, more private shipyards helping us out where we aren't helping ourselves. So this is the second of the Transi battle cruisers refitted as a uh, light battleship. Internal upheaval in Albania. Now I would love this. 
With most of my fleet in reserve, I doubt much will come of it, but still, let's go for the tension. Someone, someone must take the burden. That'll be me then. Spiraled out of control and the local warlord has taken over as president and you're criticized for your vainglorious schemes. Me? Me? Vainglorious? No, I'm, I'm just straightforwardly vain. I want to make that clear. Still a bit more scrapping and more rebuilding all around the world. But now, as we look at September, we're starting to annoy some people, which is nice. Friends with Germany, like you, Germany, come, <laughs> let's have a treaty. Soviet Union, I mean, the technology, you know, is outstanding. Soviet Union, yeah, whatever. Britain, okay, I'm, I'm not scared. Italy, pfft. Japan, it would be a nuisance having a battle uh, with Japan and friendly with America. So I'm fine uh, with all of that. Another round of fighting has broken out in the Balkans. Uh, who do I blame? Hmm, that was an interesting choice. Hmm, I think there's some good sport to be had with Italy. It's all their fault. And we have an improved fighter. <laughs> and with the other ones that have been improved, <laughs> There's no discernible difference. Okay. Now I'm noticing I am producing airplanes, but I haven't actually got any air bases. So it's October now. Other people are starting to build air bases. We, uh, we probably need to uh, crack on with that. Let's do uh, La Rochelle. Well, that's still all of them with 20. I'm going to do Northern Europe first. The, uh, the most important are uh, at Brest and at uh, Dunkirk. So at Dunkirk, I will also build uh, an airship base and also at Brest. We're at um, nine with Italy. If we um, push into the tens, oil has been discovered in the southeastern seaboard. Well, boo for lucky old America. The press headlines on the threat from Italy authorizes an increase in naval spending. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. So up to 243. Now oh, a little bit more and the spending goes up to 10. OK, um, I didn't really want to, but I think it's time to also build some bases in um, Toulon. Whoops, to be certain, and Marseille, and Nice, and certainly in Berta, and in Tunis, and in Suffax, and also on the two Corsicans. Eek. This is quite a lot, but there you go. And an airship base there and an airship base, say, in Tunis. All right, well, that was more money than I intended to spend. Um, okay, quick. I'm just going to sort out the air bases. Uh, oh, a new spell doom. Spell doom. Uh, we are at unrest level two, which I prefer not to be, but it's not too bad. Let's go to no to all. And a new torpedo bomber. Hooray. Uh, well, this first one's the clear winner. Not only does it have the highest speed, but more importantly, it has the longest range by a long chalk and is also the toughest. Um, yeah. It's good in every way. Hooray. So let's just close that. And now we're up to a nice healthy 10. So I fixed my air units um, and I've noticed that my cruisers have arrived in Southeast Asia. So time to move these two battleships back home. So let's order them along. Cross fingers. This doesn't mess up uh, the tonnage on foreign stations figure. Here we are at December. 
I'm just going to do a little save. I try and save at the end of each year and have a quick think about what's happened this year, which admittedly hasn't been enormous. If we look at the year in the round, you can see we've scrapped four pre-dreadnoughts, converted another one to a CVL, which is still ongoing. Rebuilding one of the DSAs, which is also ongoing and under construction, the two redoubtables. We've refitted two of the Bruixes, two of the Côte Logans and two of the Chansais. So not bad there, more to do, particularly amongst the smaller ships. You can see from the graph here that our expenses, this top line, have just gone around about the 20,000 mark with this peak as I started to build air power. And the orange line correspondingly is our funds, which slowly leaked away and then dipped quite largely with building all those air bases. And down here is our uh, balance, which has stayed negative almost all year long. We've had no new techs whatsoever. I'm expecting 1921 to be a much better year. We had four tension events, which is again, pretty sedate. And our budget went up from 224 at the beginning, staying flat until November. And then a couple of budget increase events has finally boosted it to 243. We've gone from the start of the year, all sweetness and light, to the end of the year where Britain and Japan are annoyed with us and the Italians are pretty damn cross. Let's see what 1921 brings us.